Hello and welcome to our tutorial of how to build your very own bird box at home using wood from recycled pallets. This project was delivered in partnership with English Heritage as part of the Marble Hill Revived project to create habitats and improve biodiversity at Marble Hill Park. We were able to create two different designs. One was a 32mm small hole front and the other was an open fronted bird box to provide opportunities for as many species as possible. Once you've got your pallets, the first thing you need to do is take them apart using the following equipment. A crowbar, a bolster, a club hammer, a claw hammer, a saw, a measuring tape and a pencil. The bolster and the club hammer aren't essential, but they do make your life a lot easier when taking the pallets apart. These pallets are stamped HT for heat treated, which means they're not chemically treated and won't be toxic to wildlife. You'll also want wood that's between 1.5 and 2.5 centimetres thick. This keeps the birds at a good temperature all year round and stops the wood from warping when it gets wet. The pallets I've got here are about 2 cm thick and they're also about 10 cm wide. I also tried to grab ones that were dry and mould free. First action of business is to separate the planks from the pallet. The easiest way to do this is by getting your crowbar between this soft block of wood and the plank next to it. If you don't have a bolster and a club hammer that's okay, you can just use your claw hammer and your crowbar. However, this is a lot more difficult um, and as you'll be able to see, it takes a lot more force. You'll probably find that you'll need to manoeuvre yourself around the soft blocks and get yourself a good angle. The next method I'm going to show you is going to make your life a lot easier when taking pallets apart. This is the bolster up close and this is a club hammer. Um, and the club hammer is a lot heavier than the claw hammer and so will give you a lot more driving force. As you can see, this equipment has allowed us to create this gap here, uh, which is a good space to wedge our crowbar. We're going to repeat this step along all the soft blocks on the pallet. And this is probably a good time to mention that you could wear some earplugs to protect yourself. So now using the club hammer, which again is heavier and will give you more force, going to wedge the crowbar under that gap that we made and use the club hammer to get underneath and lift up those soft blocks. Repeat this step all the way around. You might have to come at the blocks from different angles. I know I did. Eventually those blocks will become loose enough for you to be able to simply lift them away. You'll be left with a frame with nails in it, which you'll need to get out in order to separate the planks. If you have spare pallets, you can use them as a platform to avoid damaging any surfaces. You can use your claw hammer to bang the nails through to the other side. Next thing you'll need to do is flip the frame over. Then you need to take those nails out. You can either use your claw hammer, but I found that a crowbar makes the process much easier. Now what you should have is several pieces of nail free wood that you can cut up to make your bird box with. You're going to want to mark each of them up according to the dimensions of your bird box. To do this I like to use a measuring tape and also my saw, which you can align with the wood to create a perfectly straight line. It was quite cold that day, so you can see that I decided to get out my fingerless gloves. Once you've marked up your wood, grab your saw, create a groove by pulling the saw backwards over your marked line. Eventually you'll create enough of a groove for you to be able to use your saw properly. Then you should be left with several pieces of wood, which look a bit like this ready to assemble. I've chosen to use 40mm galvanised nails as they're relatively resistant to rust. 
If you're like me, you might find that the planks in the pallets that you've picked up aren't quite big enough to make a bird box, that's okay. What I've done is made two of each piece, glued them together using some wood glue, which will make a bird box big enough for small to medium sized birds. You might be able to find planks that are wide enough not to have to glue two pieces together. For example, this is 15 centimeters wide and will be big enough to make a bird box for small birds. As you can see here, I have access to a power drill. So just to make my life a little bit easier, I'll be pre-drilling the holes where I'll be nailing in those galvanized nails. In the front piece, for example, I'm putting four holes in each corner, which will allow me to easily connect the front piece to the base and the side pieces. Now I've pre-drilled holes in all of my pieces. Um, and if you're using wood that doesn't need to be glued together, that's fine. The holes will be going in exactly the same places. There are slight differences between the designs of an open fronted bird box and a small hole bird box, for example. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we made our small hole bird boxes at Marble Hill Park. And we made these small hole boxes using pieces of wood that did not need to be glued together. Today's the day at Marble Hill. We'll be constructing the bird boxes following on from my previous video. So the first thing we're going to do is get the base piece and align it with the pre-drilled holes in the back piece. Just make sure that your pieces are in line with your pre-drilled holes. As you can see, it's helpful here to use a spare piece of wood to balance your structure. So grab your nails. Need some long, I've got some 40 millimeter ones, just so that it penetrates both pieces of wood and it'll be secure. Slide into the pre-drilled hole. And bank. If you're finding that difficult or you have a less sturdy surface to work on, it might be easier to hold your bird box like this while you're securing your nails. Now that you've connected your base piece to your back piece, you're going to want to connect the sides and you want the long edge of the side going up against the back piece so that when you put your roof on, rain will be able to fall off naturally. Turn your bird box on its side so that the side piece is on the table. And again, you can balance the other side with a spare piece of wood. Make sure that you've aligned your pieces properly. While pre-drilling the holes isn't necessary, it does make tapping in the nails much, much easier. We're using two nails on each side here to make sure that the structure is secure. Once you've secured the first side, turn your bird box around and continue to secure the second side. Now you should have something that looks a little bit like this, a back piece and a base piece with two sides. And the next step is to add the front. Uh, so again, we've got the 32 millimeter hole, which attracts the widest range of species. And we're going to secure that again with the long nails. If you have a box that's come out a bit gappy like mine, don't worry. You can always use the next piece of wood you're securing to squeeze the box and hopefully close those gaps by securing them with a nail. So the first thing I'm doing is securing the front piece to the base piece. Once you've secured your front to your base, you want to squeeze the box, as I said before, and try to close those gaps on the sides. Even if there's still a bit of a gap at the end, that's fine. Number one, it acts as a natural ventilation and prevents the buildup of moisture in the box. Number two, when working with recycled wood, it's unlikely that your box is ever going to be perfect, but the birds will appreciate it anyway. So a lot of bird box guides on the internet ask you to use rubber, but a more inexpensive option is damp holes, which you can get from any um, hardware store. So I've just cut it to size. What you want is a little piece overhanging so that when you attach the roof to the rest of the box, 
you can uh, secure the overhanging piece to the back. By attaching this material to both the roof and the back, you have created a hinge. This hinge will allow you to easily clean the box when the birds aren't using it and will also protect it from wet weather. For this part of the construction, we're using small tacks instead of long nails just to secure the waterproof material to the roof without penetrating through the other side. And the easiest way to do this is by putting the tack through the plastic first, which then gives you something to hold on to when nailing the tack into the roof piece. You'll want to repeat this tacking process to secure the plastic to all the four corners of the roof piece. Now that you've secured your piece of waterproof material to the roof, you want to also secure the overhanging material to the back of the bird box. You'll want to do this by securing at least three nails along the top of the box. And there you have it, your finished small hole bird box. If you're mating a open fronted bird box, this is what it will look like. It's slightly bigger, so we've had to cut to size more than one piece of waterproof material. Instead of a 32 mm hole, we've created a 100 mm high front, which is the optimum height for a range of species. With this box, because the pieces are glued together, instead of having a hinge roof, we have nailed the roof to the sides just to make sure that the box is secure. That's absolutely fine, you don't need a hinge on an open fronted bird box because you can easily fit your hand in there to clean the box when birds aren't nesting. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial on how to build your very own bird box at home using recycled pallets. For more information about things that you can do at home, please visit our education page at habitatsandheritage.org.uk.